So hey everyone, my name is Rich Charpentier, and today I'm going to take you through the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. We're going to take a look at the screens here, and I know there's a lot of unboxing videos out there and a lot of how-to videos already hitting the, um, the internet, and I just wanted to go through some of the setup of the new Mavic 2 Pro. I'm really excited about it. I've been waiting for this for a while, and the new sensor is absolutely amazing. But right now, I just wanted to show you the overall screen and see some of the things that have changed, some of the things that have been added, and um, what we can look forward to with this. So first off, I've got my safety tips here. So it's talking about the new sensor system. And so forward and backward, the sides only work with certain modes, active track and tripod mode. So the rest of our modes, we're not going to get those side sensors. We're going to get the forward and the rear and underneath, but the side to side we don't get. I'm just going to say OK to that. And so taking a look at this, this looks really familiar, right? DJI Go 4 app. So what are the big changes? What's, what's going on here? Well, first, let's look on the left-hand side. So we've got our DJI symbol, and we've got our ready to go. We've got our takeoff and we've got our landing and then we've got our smart modes. So we'll be talking about these over time. We'll test out some of these smart modes. So we've got our normal, we've got the hyperlapse. I've tested out the hyperlapse and I'll be doing a, a video on it later. I can't say I was too thrilled with hyperlapse to be honest, I'm sorry. I've seen some really cool stuff from people, but the thing that grabbed my attention the most was the battery burn. So using the hyperlapse mode goes through the battery very quickly. I did a short seven second hyperlapse and it cost me almost half my battery capacity. So then we've got our quick shot, active track, the point of interest, tap to fly, and the cinematic modes. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Right below the modes, that is for the um, sensor system. So if I click on that right now, required conditions are not met. So I would need to be in tripod mode or in the active track mode. Now let's go ahead and look up at the top here. So we've got our ready to go GPS. We've got our position is known and we've got 12 satellites right now. The next little icon there, that little green front and back with the red side to side is telling me that my sensors are working forward and backward, but not the side to side. Then we've got our connectivity to our controller. Then we've got our video feed back to us, so HD, full bars. And right now we're at 97% battery, and then there's our 4.31 volts. Now, below that, we've got something new. So below position, we've got our auto ISO. We've got our shutter speed. We have an f-stop now. So this is very exciting for me because I'm very interested in still photography from drones. So I love all the video that everyone makes, but I'm still a still photographer at heart. And having aperture control from f2.8 to f11 is a game changer for me. And in the testing that I've already done over the past week, it's a massive game changer. And the new sensor compared to my regular Mavic Pro is a massive difference. So the images and the image quality coming out of the camera right away aren't even comparable. It's such a dramatic difference. So absolutely thrilled with the Mavic 2 Pro and my new flexibility here because I can now treat this camera like my DSLR. So there I go. I've got my f-stop at 5.0 right now. We've got our exposure at the moment. So the exposure is properly exposed at zero. Right now I have it set to automatic white balance. And then of course I have it's set to camera raw for the moment. And at the moment, I have 1,481 more stills that I can take with this. To the right of that, I've got it on the autofocus continuous right now. And then we've got our sidebar, which is just like our old sidebar. So up in the upper right-hand corner, we've got our three buttons from DJI. And when we click on that, we can take a look at our general settings. So remote identification, our home point settings enabling the dynamic home point to follow your controller, return to home at current altitude. 
we've got our multiple flight modes turned on, so you need to make sure you turn this on so that you can flip between sport, uh, P mode, and tripod mode. Now remember, tripod mode does give you the side-to-side -side sensors as well. Then we've got our return to home altitude, our beginner mode, our max flight altitude. We could set up our max flight distance as well. And then we've got some advanced settings. We're not going to pop down into those right now. We're just looking at the basics, you know, trying to get a handle on what's changed. So the next one, we have only forward and back, backward obstacle avoidance are enabled right now. We've got the obstacle avoidance on. We've got our radar chart turned on right now. And then we've got the bottom auxiliary lighting for landing, and that's turned to auto. Once again, another set of advanced settings. Next item here, let's go back up. So we can do our controller calibration. We can change our stick mode. So most everyone goes with mode number two, and I stick with that as well. But that's up to you. If you have a flight preference that you feel more comfortable with, you can go and change that. So that's pretty cool. Um, we've got our remote controller LCD screen. We've got our charging mode. So we could charge our phone through the controller. So that is a cool feature that I'm not going to be using right now. So the controller's battery life is fantastic. So then we have our C1 and C2 buttons. For the moment, I've got it set to the default camera forward down and advanced camera settings. And you can come in here and change these for other things that you use more often. Then we've got our 5D button. So that's the button right on our little controller screen on the right hand side next to the right hand control stick. So camera forward and down, so we could reset these to other things. And I do like the left and right decrease and increase my exposure. So that's, that's pretty cool. And let's go to the next one here. So right now, our image trans, uh, transmission, we've got it set to dual. We've got auto for our channel mode. And we've got our transmission quality right now. We're going to bop down to the next one so we can actually take a look at our voltage and our battery right now. So we've got our critically low battery warning at 10%. We've got our low battery at 25%. Normally on my Mavic Pro, I have this set to 30%. I'm going to see how this works out over the next couple of weeks for my flight. We've got our smart return to home. It also shows our flight time and shows the voltage on the main screen. I selected that because I do like to see that. Finally, we've got our gimbal mode for follow. So we could change that to FPV. Also our advanced settings, we've got our camera forward down, our adjust our gimbal and our gimbal calibration. One thing to note here, let's close this, is that the gimbal, here we go, can actually look up. So there's my Airstream. So right now, the gimbal can look up above where the gimbal could go on the Mavic Pro, on the regular Mavic Pro. So this might make for more interesting panoramas if you're doing some manual panoramas. And I'm just doing my gimbal correction right there. So now the next item on the right hand side, we've got our auto exposure lock. Then we've got the opportunity to switch between our still photography camera or our video camera. And I'm going to switch back to the still photos first. The next button down, that orange button, that's my start and stop, my um, fire the shutter, or I can actually fire the shutter on my controller as well. Below that, we've got our camera settings. So right now I've got everything on auto. What I love on here now for still photographers is the fact that we can select aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode or full manual. Now, for me, when I do landscape photography in the field, when I'm out shooting with my DSLR, uh, I'm regularly on manual. When I'm not on manual, I'm on aperture priority mode because I want to control my depth of field. I want to control my focus more. And in aperture priority mode, I can really get granular. So when I'm flying around for big landscapes, usually I'm shooting somewhere between f5.6 and f8. We go all the way to f11, so we can control our shutter speed and our exposure more because of that. But bottom line, this is a game changer for me. So often, if I'm going to be out flying with the Mavic 2 Pro, 
I'm most likely going to be in aperture priority mode. I'm going to select my aperture, and then I'm going to let the drone make the decisions about the shutter speed and about the ISO to keep me at the proper exposure. So this is super, super exciting to me. And as a matter of fact, I've got a new course up on Udemy right now for drone photography and editing drone photography. And I've included a little bit about the Mavic 2 Pro. And we've covered a lot of information in there on getting the best quality images possible. And as I move forward with the Mavic 2, I'm going to be showing you more tips and tricks on getting that high quality still photography. Because while video is great, we still want those still photos on our websites and on Instagram and on Facebook for sharing. So this is giving us an opportunity to create some really advanced still photography with such a small drone. I'm just going to hit uh, my gimbal one more time. There we go. So the next item up here is, there's my camera item. So we've got our photo mode. We can do a single shot. We can do an HDR shot. We can do a hyperlight. We can do multiple shots. We can do auto bracketing. If you want to control your own high dynamic range photos and really keep full control of those photos, you're going to be wanting to shoot in AEB and not the HDR shot mode. I haven't been super impressed with the HDR shot mode and I would prefer full control over my HDRs, so I'd rather bracket my photos. We also have our time shots, and then we have our panos. So in panos, I'm just gonna pull this up for you really quick. Down here on the bottom, we now have spherical panos, 180 vertical panos, and we'll go through shooting with panos in another video here in the near future. But I've done some testing with the panos, and once again, I found that uh, the battery goes a lot faster when we're going with these automated modes. I don't know what's behind that, but it's very clear to me that I actually, last night, did some manual panoramics and I did some automated panoramics. And what I found is that in these auto modes, it really starts eating my battery. So that's just a heads up for you. The next item we have here is our image size. So we can go with a 16 by nine. That just gets cropped on the sensor. Or we can go with our three by two. I'm gonna prefer to shoot as big as I can, so I'm going with the three by two every time. Then we have our image format. I'm gonna switch that over to raw. Oh, I can't because of the mode that I chose. Let's go back up here. I need to go back to single shot. So by the way, the pano modes don't allow you to shoot in RAW. They force you to JPEG. So that's something to keep in mind when you're using those pano modes. Now, the next item down, we have our white balance. So we can do an auto white balance, or we can set up our own custom white balance, or we can go with one of the pre-setups, sunny, cloudy, incandescent. Now, for still photography, probably going to be auto white balance for me or my own custom white balance, to be honest. The next item, style. So we have, we can actually go with standard or we can soften things up. And looking at some of my original images, I'm going to say that I'm probably going to be playing around with my own custom style because I think it was a little sharp and a little extra contrasty with some of my images coming out um, with the none setup. So I will be playing with that a little more. And actually the landscape plus one and plus one um, I think that might be a little too much, to be honest. And we'll talk more about that for uh, still photography setups later. Then we've got our color. So right now, we're just in normal color because we're in the photo mode. Remember, I'm on the camera settings, not the video settings right now. Finally, let's pop over to the next one. So we can put a histogram up in the window. And while histograms are interesting for editing in post-production for me, I don't usually uh, hang my hat on them while I'm actually shooting. I, I, I see what I'm shooting. I see where the light falls and where the darks and shadows are. And I make my decisions usually based on eyeballing it. Now, putting the histogram up, if I put that histogram up here, let's go ahead and close that just to see. It's overlapping some of my other information. So I'm not, I'm not really big on having that histogram live on the screen for me. I keep the head LEDs on. 
We lock the gimbal when it's cap when we're capturing. Enable the autofocus continuous mode where it's refocusing for you. Um, for still photography, I think this works out. I think maybe it's not as great for video, but I'm not a huge video guy. So, you know, that's something to play with and experiment with. And we'll talk about that over the next couple of weeks here as well. We can have our overexposure warning. We can auto sync our HD photos. We can put a video caption, which I'm not going to do. We can do our grid. So if you're big on the rule of thirds, there's your grid lines right there. Uh, once again, for me, I usually just eyeball it in the image, so I actually don't use the grid. I do like having the center point for me, so you can select different center points. I like the little square center point, but you can play around with that as well. Peaking threshold, I never touch it. Save the original, so JPEG or RAW. So save an original panorama with JPEG or RAW. So if you're doing the uh, automatic panoramic mode, it will do all the work for you, or you can have it save the originals and you can work with it by hand on your computer when you're done with your flight. I actually recommend that. Once again, it's all about controlling your final image. And when it comes to still photography for me, uh, controlling that final image, I want those originals. I want to be able to work with them. Also, so here's one of the new things here, storage location. So I've got an SD card in the drone right now, but the drone also comes with eight gigs of memory built into it so we can use the internal storage. So if you forget your card, which could happen, you've got internal storage to work with at all, which is really freaking awesome. I'm excited. All right, we can format our SD card. We can format the internal card and we can reset all of the camera settings. I'm gonna pop out of here for a moment and I'm gonna to switch to the video mode now. Now in the video mode, everything looks pretty similar, but let's go down to our image quality again here. So let's start back again. Once again, just like still photography, we can do aperture priority mode, we can do full auto, we can do shutter priority mode, and we can do manual. We can also, so there's the control for my aperture right there. There's my shutter speed, there's my EV right now. So I can play between these. Now moving over to this one, because this is where things are a little different. This is where we're now dealing with video. So we can do our video size. So the other day I was playing around and I did 1920 by 1080 at 120 frames per second. We can go all the way up to our full field of view, 4K or we can switch to the 4K high quality, which kind of crops things in. Once again, I'm not big on that. I like retaining my control, whether it's still photography or whether it's video. So I like having much more control. And so <laughs> there's that. Um, next item, we've got MP4 or move for what we're saving off. We've got our white balance again right now set to auto white balance. We've got our style here so we can go in here once again. We're going to be experimenting with this over the next couple of weeks as well. We're going to go for color so we can do D-Log, we can do HLG, or we can do normal. My d sin like is now gone. That makes me a little sad. And so those are our three options. So when we go to D-Log, we need to be H265. So I actually have to come down here, switch to H265, and then go back up to color to do D-Log. Notice how much more washed out this image is right here right now. So that is a little disappointing. And I accidentally tapped something by mistake. There we go. But, um, or we can go to HLG, which is a little richer, or we can go to normal. Basically, you're most likely going to want to do D-Log if you're doing a lot of cinematic work, and then you will be doing color grading when you're all said and done. Bopping over to the last menu, everything still remains the same in here. Nothing has changed here when we switched between still photography and video. So, all right, just doing this little lecture here, we've, uh, we've been recording for a while. The drone's been sitting on the ground. We're at 20 minutes, and right now the drone's battery is telling me that it's at 87%. So, still looking good. 
So all right, everyone, there is a quick walkthrough on the menus on the new DJI Mavic 2, and I'm sure you've probably seen more of these on other channels, but I just wanted to put this one up for you so that you could get a feel for the little things that have changed, especially if you haven't gotten a Mavic 2 Pro yet and you're considering one. You've got some new options in here. You've got some new video options. You've got some new still photography options. Supposedly we have a longer battery life, but I'm going to be testing that further because in my initial experimentation over the past week, I'm not finding that the battery life is all that improved, but it could also be because I've been doing some of these automated modes. Thank you for spending some time with us today and for checking out the video. In the show notes, I do have a link to my new drone photography and editing course. We cover still photography with drones. We talk about editing with Lightroom, Aurora HDR, Luminar, and Photoshop. And we're focusing on improving your still image quality from your drone. Like I said, I know everybody loves video, but this is still an awesome aerial still photography platform where you can generate some incredible results. And with the new tools with the Mavic 2 Pro, we've got an expanded base to start from, just like working with a Phantom Pro 4 as well. All right, everyone, have an awesome day and look forward to new videos coming up really soon.